differential diffusion. Let's get into it. All right, I'm assuming that you watched the first video of the tutorial series, which means your folder structure is similar to this, where you have comfy UI and your, your venv in the same directory. So we're gonna head in there into our command line. We can do that quickly by clicking the address bar and typing in CMD. And now we are inside of our command line. The next thing we wanna do is activate our virtual environment. To activate our virtual environment, we're gonna venv slash scripts slash activate. And our virtual environment is now activated. The next thing we wanna do is head inside of Comfy UI. So we're gonna cd Comfy UI, and now we are inside of our directory. The next thing we wanna do is git pull. The reason why we git pull is because we update Comfy UI with any recent changes that have been made. The next thing we want to do is activate Comfy UI. To activate, we're going to python main.py. And that is going to start up our server. We'll give it a minute to start up. Once we see this line here, we have confirmed that Comfy UI is started up and we can head to this link here. So the next thing we want to do is load in the workflow for differential diffusion. I have set up for you guys here. All right, now that Comfy UI is activated and we dropped our workflow in, you'll see that we have these errors. Now this is why I had us download the manager in the previous video. So on the right here, we're gonna click manager, install missing custom nodes, and we see that we are missing two, the Comfy UI essentials and Comfy UI impact. We are just going to click install and give it its time to install. All right, that is done, but we also have to install the next one, so we'll get that done. And now that those two are installed, down here it says restart, we're gonna click that. And if we look inside of our command line, you'll notice that Comfy UI is now installing the packages that we just installed via the manager. Once that's complete, if your Comfy UI got shut down like mine, just run python main.py again to launch our server once more. And Comfy UI will start up and we should have no errors. You notice that everything started up, we have no errors here. So in our window, everything is still red. That is because we have to refresh our page. You can press this or you can press Control R as a shortcut. And you'll notice that now we have no more errors. Now, the next thing we need to do is make sure to load our model properly. And we can start generating. But before we do, the first thing I want to do is come over to this section here. And I want to control B or you can right click bypass group nodes. Remember control B for a shortcut. I'll get into why we did that in a second. The next thing we're going to do is install this upscale model. Now you can install whatever upscale model you want, but we're going to use that one for this tutorial. We're going to come here to manager and install models. And the model we are looking for is real ESR GAN times two. We'll give that its minute to install. If we look at the terminal, it actually gives us a progress bar. And once that's complete, Comfy UI is gonna inform us that we need to refresh our page. So we can refresh our page again by clicking up here or pressing Control R. Now we have access to our upscale model and we have access to our SD15 checkpoint. Again, this is turned off and we are going to generate. Now I'm going to change this to, let's say 768 by 768 and generate. And notice that we have an image of a landscape. The next thing we want to do is unbypass the rest of these nodes and we want to come here to this image and we want to right click open in mask editor and we are going to apply a mask to our image. So let's say we wanted a person right here Now our mask is applied. We are going to uh, change our prompt here to let's say woman in a blue dress standing in a field with brunette hair. And let's generate. But you see that we were able to generate in regards to where we dictated it should be generated. So this first part of the network, this is literally the first uh, 
video of the tutorial series. It's the most basic component of Comp UI, just basic image generation. From there, what we're doing, so I'm moving this to the side for clarity, we are upscaling. So we are literally taking our image, we are piping it into this upscale image node. You don't have to use this model that I use to upscale. You can use other models as we saw here. There are many other models available for upscaling. We see them on the left here, but we can also write upscale up top and it'll give us the specific upscale models. I used ESR GAN times two because it's only upscaling times two, which means it's doubling the resolution, which means it's not too much, it's not too many pixels, so it won't be too intensive. Now, the next thing that we do is we create a, a, a mask. The purpose of the mask is a way to communicate that this is where we want whatever is gonna be inpainted. Again, all we did to activate that mask editor we right clicked, we went open in mask editor, and I'm sorry if you can't see it because my face is covering it, but there is a save to node button right under my head. <laughs> and after you in paint, that is where we will actually paint. We'll actually even uh, generate another one just for clarity. So I'll actually put it here and I'm going to click save to node. And we see we have our new mask. If we were to hit generate, going to pass that mask over and then we get to the in paint section and this is where the advancement actually takes place so there has been a new advancement in in painting called differential diffusion now I don't want to get too into how it works because I'm more focused on getting you guys access to the actual workflow so you can begin creating stuff if you guys are interested in a more technical breakdown of this and how it actually functions let me know in the comments down below so differential diffusion is just a new way of in-painting that allows for uh, much better results because you can somewhat say it's more contextually aware of where it's in-painting in the actual image. That's an oversimplification, but you get my point. So the reason why I upscale here is so that we have more pixels in the actual image to allow the in-painting quality to be a lot better. We can do a quick test without upscaling just for clarity. Again, control B to bypass nodes. It's a great way to test things out. So let's see how that, oh, it looks like it got rid of my mask actually. So let's just go ahead and make a new one. So open a mask editor. We'll just put a mask here, uh, save to node, and we'll go ahead and generate and see if we get a good result or not. You'll notice that it's not even enough pixels for it to really even in paint with. But then if we unbypass that, we're gonna have to set up a new mask as well. Um, open a mask editor, paint our mask all over here. Save to node and Q prompt then now indeed it is able to paint somebody into the image. So that is the importance of the upscale here. We were able to generate this with SD15. We upscale so that we have more pixel information and then we in paint into that pixel information. And the quality is pretty good in my opinion, especially since I am just running through a tutorial. I'm not actually flexing here. So I hope you guys like this. It's a fast, somewhat fast tutorial in that, you know, the first part of it is just uh, right into it and the second part is a brief explanation. This is how I'll try to move uh, moving forward Blessings. Hope you guys enjoy this